I don't know what's happening here with my hair. Need some water. Yeah. These booktube people just have to deal with it. Hey booktube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March. This is my bookish week for Saturday, uh, April 16th, 2022. Uh, I think tax day is on Monday this year. Yay for the U.S. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on over here, so deal with that. <laughs> I could have fixed it better. Whatever. I'm, I'm just rolling with it. So, um, it was a pretty light week last week. Last week. Not a great week, but I did finish a book, and I've still got a bunch of books going on. Um, and, yeah, I'll tell you about the one I finished. Unfortunately, it was a really... Nuts. I almost said it was a stupid one. <laughs> it was, it, it just was a, not that great of a book. And it's called A Novel Death. Yeah, I believe it's by Penny Brook. And it was a cozy mystery. It actually turned out to be a novella. It was pretty short, less than 200 pages. And it really was kind of stupid. Um, it was cute. It started off being cute. It was set in a very small, quaint New England seaside town. Um, it had to do with a small local bakery, bookshop, jewelry store, antique store, and the owner of the bakery ends up being found stabbed in the middle of town, and so now her death is being investigated as a murder. Um, <clears throat> the, the owner of the bookshop is an elderly woman who brought in her niece to manage the shop while she kind of took a break. But there was no, there was no development of that, of the reasoning or the story behind that. And the, the book, the novella was kind of f um, fast, not fast paced, but wrapped up really quickly and there was really no complexity to it. Uh, it, it was pretty easy to know who did it. It was light and... It was kind of fun until I finished it, until I realized, well, that was really stupid. It <laughs> it was, wasn't was wrapped up well, and there was no, I don't know, there was no sit on the edge of your seat kind of feeling. There was no feeling of, oh, I got I to gotta stay up till three in the morning reading this book. Not No, not at all. And it was fun to read about the, the bakery cakes and the pastries and all that and the bookshop and... That was fun, but it was just, I felt cheated by the end of the book. And that was the only book I finished last week. And that's literally all I have to say about it. Um, I'm not going to reveal the the killer or the outcome of the mystery. But yeah, that was all, that was it. That was all I had to say. I did DNF a book. And it was The Animals in That Country by Laura Jean McKay. She was the Australian author. I was reading this novel. And it wasn't a bad book. I got about 30% through. It's just, it was talking about what was called a zoo flu. And it made it possible for infected humans to understand what animals were saying. And it was, I liked the concept. And it was, an, it was actually written pretty well, in my opinion. But it was just the wrong time for me. I didn't want to read a book about a zoo flu and a contagion and in society shutting down it was just the wrong it was the wrong timing for me so yeah that's it um the only thing i have left to talk about are the books i'm currently reading and i i do have a true confession coming so these are the books i'm currently reading still working on ursula k Le Guin's the planet of exile um where am i where am i at i am on page 165, which is chapter 7 of the second novel in the Hainish series, and still really liking it. I just haven't been able to pick it up. I am further along in Lolly Willows by Sylvia Townsend Warner. This is the story of Laura Willows, who it moves in with her brother and her sister-in-law after the death of their father, and she, she goes from being Laura Willows to Aunt Lolly Willows, and I'm really liking that. This is a reread for me, and I started reading this uh, a week and a half ago. It's The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. And this, I have this one. It's the, this is interesting because it's the young person's version. And the only reason is because the print is bigger. <laughs> well, that works out for me. But 
it's there's no different in the text it's the complete unabridged text of the hobbit so yeah oh and i'm listening to pride and prejudice on audiobook it's one of those books that you know i've read a few times i just want my husband and i just watched the movie the other night it, again for the millionth time for me and i'm listening to it on audio it's an awesome it's naxos i think is the version that i'm listening to and the production value the voices the characterizations it's an awesome audiobook so i'm really enjoying that in the car now before I get to my true confession, I wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of my book haul. Okay, book hauls coming up because I'm just I've decided to break them out because I have so many piles of books to show you. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. There's going to be library book haul, um new book haul, thrifted book haul or however else I want to to divide the categories but I have two books I wanted to show you just to get a taster or a teaser I did get the volume two of Le Guin's Hainish novels and stories and this has the world the word for world is forest and then stories five ways to forgiveness and the telling I had to wait for this one from Library of America for it was out of stock for volume two so they it was like a pre-order that I ordered a month or two ago and it finally came in, so I have that ready to go after I finished volume one. This one is um, a brand new release, and I I think this was also a pre-order. Couldn't help myself, but I did get Young Mungo by Douglas Stewart. I loved Shuggy Bane, and what I love about this book is, not that I've read it yet, I haven't, but this is a hardcover book, and look at the end papers. This totally grabbed me, I had no idea. That's the, it's the same picture on the back cover as well. And I just love, I love when the hardcover books are produced in that type of a way where, you know, hardcover books and, and paperbacks are mass produced, of course, but it makes it look like the book has some craft to it. So I really appreciated that. And this is the story of um, Mungo and James it's let's see mungo and james yeah mungo is a protestant and james is catholic and they are growing up in a housing estate in glasgow scotland and it's kind of their love story and this is um douglas stewart's sophomore book after shuggy bane so that's about all i had to tell you in a bookish way so here's my true confession for this week <laughs> monetization of booktube my booktube channel um i youtube came up with this new regulations for ads where they decided if they could put ads on anybody's videos whenever they wanted and it didn't matter if our uh, channels had a certain number of subscribers or views or whatever so they decided they're going to put ads wherever they wanted um so my channel uh, oh gosh, towards more towards the beginning of the year went over a thousand subscribers. And so typically YouTube would allow you to monetize your channel, meaning you could make ad revenue on your videos by waiting until you get at least a thousand subscribers. And I think it was 4,000 viewing hours. So that combination allowed the YouTube creator to make money from ads placed on your channel. In order to get that revenue, you have to put in this application through YouTube, through Google AdSense. And it basically, it, it's a process of, of entering all of your personal information. Um, your channel has already been in existence. And so they, they look at all that and then they approve you. And then they give you this congratulatory email that you have been approved for AdSense. Then you have to go into Google AdSense and you have to enter a bunch of other personal information, tax information, all kinds of other stuff. So I, probably a month ago, I think, I turned on monetization for my videos. And I thought, I'm not expecting big money here. You know, you don't get big money when you've got a thousand subscribers. And I was thinking if I make, you know, $10 a month, I'll, I'll put that into a little account or whatever and maybe buy books with it, maybe put it into my daughter's savings account. I don't know, I figured that's what I would do with it. Okay, here's the deal. It was such a pain in the ass to go through entering all this information and then um, 
you know, when they started asking me for my tax information, I knew I'd have to provide my bank account information to get payments and whether it was on PayPal or whatever. And quite honestly, I was frustrated with it and lazy and decided I don't give a crap if I'm monetized or not because I didn't get on YouTube to make a bunch of money. There will be no way for my channel at the level that I will get to will make big money. There are, you know, channels of young adult booktubers who have hundreds of thousands of subscribers that can make money on book content. That will not be me. <laughs> and there, we all know, of course, I don't remember, I think it's some, some YouTubers in the gaming community who have millions and millions of subscribers and they're making wealth off of YouTube. So that would never have been me. And I honestly did not want to go through the rigmarole of putting in, entering all this information for what? And then what happens is YouTube aggregates any of your revenue until you get to $100 and that's when they pay you. So you don't even get this $10 or $9 or, or $4.50 every month unless you have $100 in your bank. That's when they send you your check. And it's just more trouble than it's worth. I don't care about this money. I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't come on BookTube to make money. And it was kind of fun to think about. And it's like, hey, I can get monetized now. I, I made it to a thousand subscribers. And yeah, that was kind of fun. And it's like, oh, you know, hey, I made it finally. I'm, I've got to this level and I've got to, you know, this many views and this many hours and this many subscribers. That's all fun to think about but I don't care about this tiny little revenue. Should I? I don't know, but I don't. And I don't want to add any more ads that ha than have to be on my videos. I would rather people enjoy the viewing experience, enjoy watching the content, even if they have to skip over an ad or two in the beginning. I don't honestly know where YouTube puts the ads. I think it's all in the beginning, I'm not sure. I don't even know if they've put ads in the middle of any of my videos. If you've watched them and have noticed, let me know. So I'm pretty sure they might be in the beginning. Um, but that's my true confession is I don't care about monetization. And if I was a bigger channel, I might, you know, take that more into consideration. But at this level, I, I just don't care. And I can reapply down the road if I happen to make it to 10 I start laughing already. 10,000 subscribers. That's not going to happen. But I can I can reevaluate if I want to monetize or not. Um but yeah, so I that's not why I'm here and I just I don't know if it's lazy or just uh, I don't know. I just don't care and I don't want to go through the process. I think that's what it is. I'm just here to have fun. I'm here to talk about books and I'm here to be lazy, the lazy booktuber. That's my subtitle. And and move on. So, so yeah, that's it. That's all I had to talk about. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to plan out my, my future videos because there's a couple of tags I really want to do. But I have so many piles of books that I've acquired. I want to do the, the um, what's the tag that Shelly created? I, don't, I think it's the book acquiring and how you're buying books. I really have a lot to talk about with that one. I want to do the... Um, Trans Kids Tag from Leo Bancroft. So there's so many things I want to do and I have so many other videos besides tags and hauls that I've been thinking about and working up. So I'm trying to figure out when to schedule all that stuff. I'll do it. I'll do it. It's th That's no trouble. And that's <laughs> it's not a problem I, I regret having. And it's not even a problem. It's just me me being flighty and flaky on, on video. So let me know what you think about any of the books I was talking about. And let me know if you uh, have any other questions about my ads or monetization or lack thereof. And uh, I think you realize I just truly don't care. So <laughs> thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.